Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we are bringing you a review of a keyboard we've taken a look at before, at least a different model. <clears throat> I've actually reviewed two other ones or sub-variants of this model, the first one being uh, this one, the K631. Now this one I have modded and this board has a special place in my heart and my collection because when I first got it, I was like, nah, this ain't going to work because the top case is also the plate. But as I learned with the K620, the use of K620 TKLs, I find that the plastic top, um, and I don't know if it's polycarbon or ABS, I guess that it's polycarbonate. But either way, having a plastic top case that also serves as a plate makes for a pretty nice keyboard. This one is just minimally modded. Um, I'm using WASD keycaps on here, so they're a little thin, but I quite enjoy this keyboard, and it has become my uh, primary workstation, uh, video workstation keyboard. It stays on top of my laptop because it fits perfectly and it has everything that I need. After that, I took a look at the K631 Pro. Um, now, basically, the K631 to the K631 Pro went from wired to now wireless and Bluetooth, so a three mode. It has a nice little pocket there for um, for this. This one, I have not modded it yet. I do have it on the list of keyboards I'm gonna mod because, again, with that um, plastic plate, uh, I think there's a lot of um, room for improvement and you, know, you don't have to deal with that steel plate. Obviously, stock switches aren't gonna be the best, but they can be lubricated and sound pretty good. So the other day on Discord, uh, on our Discord server for our budget keeps, a um, one of our users came by and they were like, "Hey, uh, anybody have any ideas about the K631 Pro SE?" And I was like, "There's a new one." And I looked online, and sure enough, there was a new one. And I was like, "Huh?" I was not aware. So I reached out to Red Dragon. This was Monday, or no, I'm sorry, this was Wednesday, and today is Friday and I just received it. So um, to kind of answer some of the questions the user had posed in the uh, Discord and to go ahead and uh, review the third one now in this series, I went ahead and decided we're gonna take a look today at the K631 Caster Pro SE, or usually stands for Special Edition. So uh, now this one is supposed to, now I know they, they say it's a 60%, it's really a 65%. This one comes with different switches. Um, and I, I wanna say they're silent switches, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about R35 charm. So, but the case does seem to be slightly different and the colorway, uh, which they call mint, does seem to be somewhat different. So let's go ahead and open her up and take a look at what we've got. When I see this new logo, I know that this is gonna be the newer type uh, Red Dragon boards. If anybody's accustomed to them for the longest time, they've been using the Milmax style hot swap, uh, switch, uh, hot swap sockets, which meant that we were limited by which switches we could use, primarily the Zoos, Aco CS series, and KTTs um, for the most part. But the majority of the rest of the switches just would not work unless you actually manually modify each and every single switch. But nowadays, Though they're still using Otemu, Otemu has come out with a new type of hot swap socket, which basically allows for all three and five pin hot swap or switches to be compatible. All right, so in the box we have uh, Red Dragon stickers, uh, ready for battle. We have uh, two, a switch puller and a, a keycap puller, both wired. I prefer when they put them in, in the one tool. I'm not the biggest fan of the horse. Uh, switch pullers and they also include thank you yet again uh, red dragon and royal club seems to always get this right not only do they include a cable that has a tail with the usb c to usb a adapter but they also have it elbowed since the port on this keyboard is on the side they have a simple manual to walk us through this one's also uh, being that it's got the pro moniker it also has the um the wireless capabilities Let's see about these switches. 
Ooh. Ooh. See, now here is something new. We've got some stock Ooh, switches from Red Dragon. I do not believe I've seen these before, to be quite honest with you. They have four legs instead of wing, wing lat style. So I'd be curious to see who actually manufactures these. They're long stem. They probably have about a 3.6 or 3.8 travel. No, no ping whatsoever. And they actually have a little bit of sparkle on the top housing. So, and they are. They are branded Red Dragon. All right, Google is not being any help at all in trying to recognize what these are. I would guess they are 38 to 42 gram linear long pole nylon top palm stem PC no, nylon bottom PC top and perhaps a palm stem, but. I know that some of the ones they have are just uh, rebranded Otemu switches, uh, like the Panda. But this one, I have no idea what it is. Hopefully, I'll find out soon enough. But these are, and they're five pin. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, this is um, this is interesting. Those holes at the bottom would almost make me think that they're a TTC switch. I don't know, but I, I got to say, this is. This is the, the nicest switch I've seen from a Red Dragon yet. Now let's take a look at the keyboard. Well, one thing that's definitely new, this is the first time I can say I've seen a translucent uh, Red Dragon key, keyboard. So we can see all the way through down to the bottom. So basically we have a very similar build, probably the same mold, but it's just using, oh, lost my, oh I took that one off, that's right. If I was going to paint the bottom of this, I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, so what basically looks like we're dealing with the same case, except this one is a translucent ABS, I would guess. So we have your standard 68% layout without a blocker. Um, we have a function one and a function two. Um, I believe it just matters what key combination, but I don't believe this one has tap functionality, but we do have up to three Bluetooth devices and one 2.4 with the dongle. And we have a programmable mode uh, to, con to program the lights without the software, but the software does allow you to do um, that programming as well. Let's see what this thing looks like lit up. As, al as always with the other ones, we have the uh, port and the switch and all indicator lights on the side. Helps if I actually push it all the way in. All right. So it looks like we have some decently bright RGB. And just to make sure, if we go into wireless mode, yep, we have RGB and wireless. There's been some keyboards that have been removing the RGB lights when you're in Bluetooth mode. I mean, I get battery conservation, but just eliminating the entire feature seems kind of silly. So we have what looks like OEM keycaps. Let's take a look at these caps real quick and see what they're made of. All right, they're double shot shine through keycaps. I don't know why I thought in the picture that they were not double shot, uh, shine through. So let's see. We are looking, oh, nice, 1.4. That's a decent width for uh, shine through OEM keycaps, I mean, Keycaps that come standard on you know, stock boards, pre builds. Wow, there's definitely a difference. This is. Hear that ping? That's a much, much better sound. Um, just to check, I think these are reds. Yep, these are your standard Red Dragon reds. But as you can see, the three and five pin hot swap compatibility. And those are Otemu, um, I do believe. So, let's put you back in there, buddy. 
And I think even the keycaps, because I mean, let's see the difference in the width from the keycaps of their pro version. Oh yeah, that's an, that's an insane difference. And we're at just 1.0 on one side and about 0.8 on the other. So below one, one millimeter, really. They've definitely thickened up the keycaps. So it, it, there are some, uh, it, may, it might be minor, but I think they're all adding up because I mean, I don't think I've ever seen or heard a Red Dragon sound this good stock, honestly to be quite forthcoming with you. And I mean, obviously we can tell there is uh, no dampening below the PCB, though I foresee a silicone pour in the near future. <laughs> but let's see what we have between the plate and the PCB. So again, um, like I said, the top frame of this is also the plate. So it means we have plastic. Now, obviously I can go all the way through, but is there no dampening between the plate and the PCB? There was. Oh no. There is no dampening between the plate and the PCB. Go all the way through. Well, I'll be. I, I could have swore there was some dampening in here. Now the PCB definitely looks newer. So they definitely, um, I know that they've been test driving these switches or these sockets for the hot swap, but it looks like they have made a lot of improvements. I love that these are five pin. I mean, yes, if you need three pin, all you got to do is cut them off, but still the fact that it comes like that is quite nice. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm confident in saying this is by far the best stock Red Dragon I, I've come across so far. I mean, and they are improvement because I mean, this, this is four months ago, maybe I received this one. You can hear the ping and you can hear the clack from the switch as well as the thinner caps. versus the Pro SE. It's almost, I, I would almost dare to say this is on the thockier side. I gotta say, I'm impressed. I am impressed with this keyboard. And I think the G1, G2, G3, I think those are layers if I'm not mistaken because they have been improving also on their software as of late. All right, there we go. All right, page up is actually the effects, and page down is selecting individual colors. Well, I definitely like uh, the Legends a lot better than this. This one is kind of that funky gamer um, futuristic. This one's a lot more natural. I mean, you still got that little cut in the Q and the O's. I mean, that should be a zero, but I don't know. Um, but I gotta say that I, I think the legends on this are better, but the light, maybe it's just the legends that's making the light look better because these are big and they kinda appear like they're bleeding. Whereas here it looks like the color is a lot more refined and direct. Um, so they call this a quiet linear switch. It's definitely not quiet, but it's not clacky. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the Red Dragon K631 Pro SE, also known as the Caster. This is a fully 3 and 5 pin, 65% 3 mode hot swappable keyboard. It comes stock with a 1600 mAh battery and weighs 464 grams. It does come with thicker ABS shine through keycaps and an ABS see through case or semi opaque. It also includes linear switches that are long pole and appear or sound to be pre-lubricated as it has no, sp no spring ping. 
This keyboard manufacturer retails for $59.99 on the Red Dragon store. And the chin of this keyboard sits at 19 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 25.5 millimeters, providing for a five degree typing angle. Using the included pair of feet, you will raise the back up to 33.5 millimeters, providing you with a 10 degree typing angle. So I gotta say, I'm I'm impressed with this keyboard. The, the stabs aren't the best, but I mean, we all kind of expect that we're gonna have to do some work on stock stabilizers anyway. But um, they're actually, well, yep. We have a bit of, like one side is a little looser than the other. I think these will benefit much from uh, the tape mod, but I still, I, I'd really like to know what the switch is because I like it. Um, even though it's it's on the lighter end, it has, like I said, those sparkles in the top um, PC uh, cover, top housing, and that gold stem. As you can see, this is a linear switch. And hard to see, but I feel it. It feels just a tad bit greasy. So it's lightly lubricated. Oh, and we have a two-stage spring as well. It's not to seem to be a progressive spring. No, just a two-stage spring that has absolutely no ping in it. So I must say, I'm honestly taken aback by this keyboard, and I'm very interested in this switch. Um, I want to say those holes at the bottom are TTC-like, but um, it doesn't have the usual diffuser that the TTC switches have. So I can't say who the manufacturer is, but I'm pretty sure I've seen those two little holes on either side of the center pole. So if anybody out there knows um, what switch this is or can guess what manufacturer this is please let me know in the comments below because i am curious I, I i'm really liking this switch i'm almost tempted to take this out after i mod it and check it out on another board um because it's it's that nice uh hey it's a little lighter than i would like but it's kind of like a silver in a certain degree and so we've got decent stabilizers it looks like they really just need a little bit of tolerance adjustment by using the tape um, I'm honestly surprised that there's no dampening I, I would have figured at least between the plate and the PCB so I'm definitely going to be coming back to this one and mod it up I, I did light modding on the regular K631 but this one I think I'm going to go all out um, give it some padding between the plate and the PCB do a silicone pour below so that we could still see the lights and enjoy that um, and I'll probably do all that, do a test with it stock, and then replace the switches and the key caps and see how far up I can take this. Because, I mean, it's a really it's a really nice little kit. I gotta say, I, I'm honestly impressed and I'm glad that um, the user on our Discord uh, brought this up to my attention. That way I could take a look at it, but I'm looking forward to modifying uh, this kit and seeing what comes of it. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about, I mean, if, has any of you guys gotten the newer Red Dragon boards that do us up the three and five pin hot swap sockets? Um, like I said, I was, I was impressed between the original and this one because they definitely made some improvements, namely the fact that you could put, you know, three and five pin hot swaps in it. But stock eh, it's getting pretty bad when i need to start a catalog so i can find where my keyboards are at um this is one of their newer boards it has a very similar um design uh, this is the 60 percent this is the the fizz the k617 um now this one all i did was uh i tape mod a pe foam mod and i lubed the switches so other than that it's stock So this one sounded like this one before I modded it. And I mean, that mod, it, it didn't take that long. I mean, it was a few screws, some tape, PE foam, 
and I lubed the switches using my quickie lube method. Um, I think it was roughly about an hour, hour and 15 minutes maybe. And I was able to take, like I said, these are the stock red dragon switches. But as you can see, it's a very similar design. Um, like the top plate is a, is the, the top case is also the plate. So they're definitely moving forward and improving. You can see these. Oh yeah, this is using the same legends as those. Now, this is just a wired only one. But I, I've handed it to some people and said, here, here's a red dragon. They're like, yeah, okay. Wait a minute, why does it sound so good? I'm like, yeah, I modded it. But it's using all the stock components. So when you can mod something and use all the stock components, you just have to give them some tuning. I think that's good value. I got to say, I'm becoming very fond of what Red Dragon is doing by providing much better keyboards out of the out of the game. Um, one of my first mods was a full size K551. Um, I spray painted it. I filled it with um, induced silicone. I'm gonna say I did uh, drawer liner. Um, oh, I did pennies as well. And I hot glued pennies to the bottom of the case, spray painted it, um, and, and tape modded it, and it sounds pretty good. Um, it's been a little beat up because I've taken it a lot of places, but uh, oh, I supported it. But a lot of people are like, "That's not a red dragon." I'm like, "Yeah, it is." Um, although uh, EU supports too, really good mention. That's why I like the uh, the K620 because it has the top plate. Is also or the top part of the case is also its plate so you got plastic and plastic is a, if you have a steel plate and you have switches that have spring ping yes the spring ping originates inside of the spring but then they reverberate across the steel board um, if you have spring sp uh, switches that ping on a plastic board you're gonna hear the ping from the switch but it's not gonna rever reverberate across the entire keyboard so um, having plastic, and I think honestly, once these manufacturers really get into, I mean, I think we're going to see some interesting uh, boards this year, including sub one hundred dollar QMK Via from these other stock providers. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Twenty twenty three comes and we haven't seen it, but from what I've heard, grumblings in the industry, that's what we're looking to see here, probably by second mid mid second quarter. To the, to the third border so I'm definitely looking forward to that because a lot of these boards I mean especially if they have per key RGB they usually have the guts that are powerful enough to power QMK it's just a matter of writing the base code for that particular MCU though I know a lot of these corporations are using either Sonics or Sonics clone MCUs and all of them are they're all the codes already there uh, to make it QMK so that'll be interesting to see but this one i'm this is it, it, red dragon is really upping their game they're coming out with keyboards that are much more worth the price tag because they haven't really raised their prices the prices are basically the same but now you're getting more keyboard for the same or less if you think about inflation a cost because um I mean, even back in the day, the 65 percent that weren't even hot swappables were 60 bucks, 65 dollars. So, this is hot swappable, compatible with any three and five pin hot swap hot switch or any three and five pin switches. Um, it has a much better build quality, in my opinion. They're more solid. They weigh more. Um, they don't. They no longer feel so much like toys. They're starting to feel more like tools. So, I've got to say this impressed me more than I thought it would uh, again I want to thank the user I don't have your name handy but you know who you are that told me about this I hope that I was able to answer your questions and I mean I know that you were saying that it's a silent because they do say it's a silent linear it's not a silent linear it is a linear that isn't as clacky and it's not pingy because it doesn't um, it's not a it, appears to be either lubricated or just well made although I like I said there was a light amount of, of um, what felt like grease or oil so 
they've definitely upped their grant game, but it's not silent. If you want silent, you're going to have to get some Bobas or some U4s. But anyway, they're, they're just getting, keyboards are getting better. Um, I'm glad to see this happening, especially with these in-stock boards that, you know, for, for the longest time, these were basically the only things available, and there weren't anything to write home about. But Red Dragon is definitely upping their game here and delivering a much better product. Uh, I got to say, I mean, I'm not usually a fan of the translucent case, but they did it right here. I mean, it just it just works. I mean, they're, they're not trying to add any extra RGB. They're just using the RGB that's inside the case. So uh, I think it's, I, I mean, again, we got to remember how, you know, how much this is. So I've got to say, Red Dragon, you guys hit it out of the park, but let's keep doing this. But we're going to want to see some options for QMK and Vion. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to praise you, but at the same time, I'm going to make sure that you know what customers are looking for. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of the K631 Pro SE, special edition, I guess. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.